with our drop down date selectors in place uh, it's a probably good time to to preview our dashboard and just take a look at where we're at so we can select a date and we see that it updates our uh, chart we see that we've got the full um, uh, range of dates here from our data funnel in both of our drop downs but uh, uh, selecting those date ranges is not affecting uh, the range of the chart yet so that'll be our next step is to tie in what we're selecting uh, in those um, selectors there, the date range selectors with our chart. Uh, it's probably good, it's interesting to take a look at what we're seeing, what we're sending to the server in the order of uh, request variables and you'll see that we're now sending a begin date and an end date uh, when we select March of 07 it's sending us 2007 uh, March 1st that's good and when we select an end date of October 7th it's sending us 2007 October 31st so that is the the range that we want to use to select our data So going back over to the builder now, uh, we can open up the data funnel responsible for populating that chart. And this is what the data looks like that's coming. It's doing a query to get uh, the date by the date and the country out of our base data funnel which is our orders data funnel and so what we need to do is modify that query to select based on those request variables that we're now sending and we could do it this way but I think it'll be more interesting to modify it through the wizard the data funnel wizard we have a little more a few more helps that way um, and so this is our um, initial uh, uh, SQL statement doing our selection and what we need to do is add in a WHERE clause and we'll use our um, server script notation here to get the value of those request variables Forgotten here is to uh, put my tick marks in here so that our SQL interprets those correctly. And now we should see correct data. Uh, and if we look closely, we'll see that it is from. Uh, 1st of January through the end of March which corresponds with the variables that we have set for default. Now those variable defaults will be overridden by whatever we select in our uh, in our date selectors that we created. So we're now ready to take a look at a preview again and see where we're at. So this is looking good because we have said we want to start on uh, January 7th and end of January of 07. 
and uh, so this should be giving us the data from the first of January to the end of January one month's worth of data um, and we can change our month and we see now we have January through April so that is looking good now you notice that when we uh, first brought up the dashboard we went from uh, January to January and that may not be um, as interesting as maybe covering the first quarter of the year and so we can go to the um, drop down for the end date and set a pre-selected value so that uh, when it first comes up it'll be January 07 to March 07 and um, so that's a little bit a little bit more interesting to see three months rather than just a single month when that comes up well that is um, uh, as difficult as it is to get uh, our uh, date selectors to select a range of data for our chart. The next thing we'll be tackling then were, are those that list of checkboxes now to allow us to also filter out countries from our data. and we will tackle that in the next segment.